Hey everyone, History Mystery Man here. You know, I had so much fun at Atomic Speedway with the World of Outlaw Late Models. I thought I'd do it all over again here at the Big E. Welcome to Eldora Speedway. It's flow racing night for the super late models. All the heavy hitters are here, including Kyle Larson in the six car. There's a lot going on. Looking forward to each and every moment. Welcome aboard. Let's go see what's inside. Is that your ride? Yes, sir, it is. You driving? I am, yes, sir. Where are you from? Uh, Augusta, Georgia. Really? Yes, sir. Your name is? John Henderson. Yeah, have you been here before? I have, yes, sir. This is my third time, but it's been a few years. Yeah. Yes, sir. Get the jitters coming to Eldora? Always. Always. Anytime you pull it in. It kind of comes gate. with the territory yep, here. Exactly right. You like the track? I do. Yeah. See how this new surface holds up. Yeah. Where do you run back home? Um, we travel pretty good bit this year, uh, but normally just race around. I mean, Gaffney, Modoc, Swainsboro, Scriven is really home for, yeah. for us. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir. Checking Twitter. I am actually. You are? Yeah. <laughs> what a guess, huh? Yeah. Are you glad that Elon Musk bought Twitter? Uh, I don't really know. Remains to be seen. Okay. Um, Jury's still out for you. Anytime you take a public company and make it private, obviously one person has a lot more control, so that'll be interesting to see. That's the only social media platform I'm on, actually. Really? I'm not on any of the other ones. No I kidding. actually enjoy Twitter, so. Okay. I don't think he's going to ruin it, but it will take away some of the, uh, you would think it would take away, you know, uh, some positives of being a, a public company, but maybe he'll make it better. Okay. We'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. Are you the driver of this car? I am not. You are not. You are right now, though. I am right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm similar in weight. It's, so. a, it's a beautiful car. Thank you. It really is. You are Josh, right? I am. The wizard. The wizard. Why do they call you the wizard? Because our car was named Dorothy. Dorothy. So somehow oh. it became the wizard out of that. I got you. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> Is your pit crew the scarecrow, the tin man, and the cowardly lion there? We're not. Did, well, did, did. <laughs> some days, let me tell you. Brandon Overton from Evans, Georgia. Do I have that right? Yep. <laughs> We're off to a good start then. Um, what do you do down in Evans, Georgia? Are you a full-time late model racer? Is that what you do for a living? Yeah, pretty much. I've uh, been doing it since I was, well, really, ever since I got out of high school, I ain't never really had a, 
a for real job. We just always raced and uh, try to make it work the best we can. But you make a pretty good solid living doing it, don't you? Oh uh, yeah, sometimes. Especially uh, when you win two dreams back to back. Yeah, we. Uh, you know how it is. These uh, just takes a lot of sponsors and, and good car owners and stuff to let us do what we do. We're pretty much, if you do good, we're probably the only ones that come out in this deal. So uh, yeah, it works. It like I said, it beats getting a real job. Now, do you run locally? Do you want run with a tour? Do you pick and choose? What do you do? Yeah, we just pick and choose. We just go whatever makes the most sense to us. Uh, try to look ahead and uh, if nothing's going on around our house or in anything regionally, and we know we got a big race coming up, we'll try to, to venture out a little bit and go see if we can't make some laps before we get there for some big money. Do you get nervous when you race? Or are you past all that? No, nah, I think uh, I don't know if that, I don't know if that ever goes away, or yeah. for at least for me it does. Sure, sure. How on earth did you win back-to-back -back dreams at Eldora Speedway? I mean, you seem to have a pretty good hold on this place. I think you won the World 100 last year as well. That's huge. Drivers go their whole life and don't even make that race. You you won it two dreams as well. How'd you do that? Oh. <laughs> Hell, I don't know. I uh, <laughs> just we just hit on a, a good setup. It was real balanced for that weekend. The track stayed pretty similar the whole time, and just kind of kept rolling with it. And uh, it just all worked out for us. Um, you know, we come back for the world or whatever, and we won one of them. And then the track kind of changed a little bit, and we, we were you know back average again. So just uh, you know, sometimes I think things are just meant to be, and for whatever reason, that's what happened. Uh, you have a favorite track? Uh, yeah. I, I haven't been there in a while, but I always say I love going to Magnolia, Mississippi. I wanted to ask, uh, when you guys have the uh, wheels and tires off the cars, you have the cover over the wheel well. Is there a big secret back there that everybody's hiding? Is, is the nuclear codes back there? What <laughs> Are there secrets we don't uh, need to know about? Or I don't know. What's that, what's that all about? I think we all probably, we're probably all pretty similar, you know, I mean, maybe just a little bit of head games or... I don't know. Hell, I think we're just so immune to putting them up now. We just, just what we always do. So, no big secrets back there? No. I don't think so. Okay, so I don't need to go dig yeah. around in there, do I? Yeah. Okay. You know, I'm a sprint car guy, and when the haulers come in, they're all wrapped and lettered up and pretty. Most of these dirt late model haulers are bare. Is, is there a reason for that? Uh, no, but we notice that too. We always say when we get, when we get to watch them at Belushi or stuff, uh, just talk about how nice the rigs are and how they're all wrapped up with big sponsors. I don't really know why. Um, I don't know. A lot of the sprint car guys have big name brand sponsors. You know, most of these guys that own these things are just individuals that own a business. So uh, I guess that's, you know, the main reason. Who's your toughest competition here tonight, if you could pick three? Man, they're all tough. There ain't, there's, everybody in these pits can win. When, you, when they put a race on like this, uh, all the heavy hitters are here, and uh, you can't ever count any of them out. Have you ever had a conversation with Kyle Larson? Yeah, yeah, I talked to him. Uh, yeah, just getting to know him from, uh, you know, Rumley and everybody at Longhorn and same chassis, just kind of talking to him. Yeah, we, uh, I see him when he can, gets off and runs his dirt car some, so yeah. So finally, what can we expect here tonight? Um, uh, there's no telling could... what we're going to get tonight. Uh, the track, obviously, they've had a bunch of bad weather. Um, it's it's been cold. Real sunny, yeah, it's cold. What does and, that do? Uh, uh, it, it ain't gonna dry up for sure, I don't think. Yeah. yeah maybe it'd be a little rough. Yeah, I gotcha. You like it that way? Uh, not really. <laughs> okay. Not really. Thanks for your time. I appreciate yes, you. Sir, thank Best you. of luck. For any reason, you do have to go to the tail. This is, of course, your hot pit that you're standing in here, down through here.
champion Tyler Courtney. Do I have it right? Is this your first ever dirt late model start? Yeah, this is my very first one. We made a few test laps at uh, Cherokee Speedway in South Carolina. But other than that, this is my uh, first dirt start in a late model. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we're on the front row of the B main. So hopefully just run top three and get in the show and get as many laps as we can and get ready for the, the million dollar race they got here in June. How did you get this opportunity? Uh, the man right behind you, Jeremy Bullens, uh, just uh, it's his he, car, his yeah, team. Yep. Yeah, uh, so he's a crew chief in the NASCAR Cup Series for Austin Cindric, and uh, he's got a dirt late model that he gets to play around with. Really, this guy's like, a crew chief yeah, for Austin Cindric. Yeah. Wow. wow. So he's uh, nice enough to let me come out and uh, drive his race car. So just uh, excited for the opportunity, and you know, hopefully it can go good. Track looks like a handful tonight. Yeah, it's, it's chunky. It's, it's definitely not the the track you want for your first dirt late model start, I don't think. But uh, you know, it is what it is, and uh, we came here to get laps, so that's what we're gonna do. What sort of mental adjustments do you have to make to go from a 1,400 pound sprint car to a 2,400 pound late model? Basically, just throw everything you know out the window and start over. So, uh, I mean, the the racing is all the same, really. Like you you race a race car to the same way you do everything, but uh, you know, everything you do on a dirt sprint car versus a late model is kind of ass backwards. So um, you just just uh, kind of just start start fresh in your mind and learn as you go. You had a long conversation with Kyle Larson. What were you guys talking about? Uh, just what to expect on the starts of these races, the air and you know dirty air behind cars and stuff like that. Just uh, what to do and what not to do, really. Got it. Thanks for your time. I yep. appreciate. It. Best you. of luck. Appreciate it.